Yo, what's up? It's Kendrick Lamar, and I just sat down with the legendary NWA Billboard exclusive. God. What's happening? What's up with it? Man, I'm tripping out right now, man. <laughs> but looking at y'all right here, bro, it's like, I got too many questions, so bear with me, man. I'm probably asking a whole bunch of stuff, dog. It's all good. Yeah. Don't worry about nothing. First, first thing, just for me personally, y'all been in this game 30 plus, going through so many different eras and so many different stages of success. How do you manage to keep the sanity up there, period? I'm gonna speak for myself. The way I keep my sanity is because of the love that I have for the music and the passion that I have for this hip hop thing. You know, I can't let anything get in the way of that because it's like, first of all, it's my first love, the music and this thing that we do. And I'm gonna protect that. I'm gonna protect how I'm able to keep creating. So that's, one of the main ways that I maintain my sanity. Right, right. Early in the game, when I was, you know, still young, still not really sure how far it was gonna take me, I made, I made a vow to myself that I wouldn't let the game change me. Yeah. That I was just gonna be myself no matter from the clubhouse to corporate. Yeah, yeah. I'ma just be myself and uh, let the chips fall where they may. But at the end of the day, I'ma still be happy with who I am. You know, whether I blow up and, and, and then fall off or whatever, I just vowed that I was going to be happy with who I am no matter what's my status in the game. Exactly. It's weird because it's almost like an unspoken thing that we all set for ourselves and we all have maintained that thing. We're not going to let anything change us. We're going to approach this shit exactly the way we want and we're going to do our best at it. Since day one amongst each other. Yeah. That's how y'all felt. Me, well, me. The way I keep saying, man, I try to put God first. Uh -huh. Try to stay away from the fakes. You know what I'm saying? Don't take everything so serious and just do it like that. Let everything fall like it's gonna fall. Uh, me, I just stayed the same, you know. I mean, cause me and Dre go back so far, you know, 30, long 30 years. Yeah, we go back long before NWA, yeah. so. Yeah. And just, when I talk to him or Cuba, Everybody's like the same way it was 25 years ago. Yeah, it's like we just saw each other yesterday, you know what I'm saying? It's just like everything falls right into place. No, no big heads, none of that ego stuff. That's a trip. That's a trip. How do y'all balance um, this lifestyle with the, you know, your family? You know what I'm saying? I try to keep it separate. You know, like my family, like when I do stuff, they really don't be around that much. You know, probably like every once in a while, but uh, that's how it is. Because it's too many, to me, it's too many fakes in the game, and I don't want my family to expose all them fakes, because I done went through it. We all went through it, like coming up, we went through like so many shady characters. You know, I just keep my family away from it if I can. And you know, I, I try to maintain the balance. You know what I mean? Family time is family time, work is work. Try to separate the two. Uh, but you know, as my kids got older and are, are getting older, they, they want to be part of the business. So how they want to be a part of it, whether they want to be in front of the camera like O'Shea oh, Jr. is doing with Stroud Compton movie, or they want to be behind the scenes like my other son, Daryl, who's, you know, into the producing tip. So, you know, it's really what they want to do, and I'll try to get them the knowledge and then provide them with an avenue, but it all comes down to their talent and their hunger, and that they keep it in perspective, too, that family is family and this is business. Yeah, I feel like uh, the way I function is probably a, a little bit of both Ren and Q. You know, it's just like I have to protect my family and try to keep them away from all the bullshit. And like Ren said, the shady characters. And at the same time, they're really supportive, very supportive of what I do. You know what I'm saying? And they understand how much I love this thing. So they're just there to support anything that I'm doing, any project that I'm working on. And hopefully, uh, push me and inspire me to make everything that I'm working on great. Definitely, definitely. Being that it's like, like I said, 30 years, like you said, y'all go back even further than that. What's some of the hardest part in dealing with the business and in, in coming to grips on certain things that you didn't understand when you was 20 years old or, you know, straight out of high school and doing your thing until now? I was, to me, I would say 
publishing, and we didn't know about it. Yeah. And the first go around, we didn't make a nickel. Yeah, we didn't know shit about the business. We were just some creative guys that got together and did something amazing. But once we started understanding the business, you know, that's when we started realizing how much bullshit comes along with it. And for me personally, the hardest part was probably separating myself from the bullshit. You know what I mean? Having to stand up for myself and separate myself from the bullshit. So I would say, yeah, that would have to be the hardest part for me. You know, to me, the hardest part is is just dealing with the business aspect. You know, that's just the most boring and fucked up part of the game. Right. It's fun to make records. It's fun to be in the studio with your homies. Yeah. Coming up with shit, it's fun to get on stage. The business part sucks. Yeah, I don't like it. It's always a lesson. Yeah. It's always awkward. You know what I mean? And it's always some shit you, re you ready to to get rid of and get back to being creative. So, yeah, but you gotta do it. You yeah, gotta do so, it because if you don't, the creative part is gonna lack, you know? And it can ruin relationships. Yeah, yeah. Scary. so yeah. the business is the worst part of the game. The best part is making the music. Ma making the, the music and making the money. That's the best, the best part. part. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing that I've ever felt in my life other than anything to do with my family feels better than having a hit record out. Every artist out there will agree with that. Having a hit record, it's like, that's the ultimate high if you're an artist. Yep. Just being in the studio. Is a yeah, yeah. You know, coming people. up with stuff. And hitting that stage, you know, it's like them three things is why I still make music. Yeah, because I, I, be, I be trying to express these same feelings to, you know, people that's close, you know, to me. And they get it, but I don't know if they quite understand how much like, I have to be in the studio. Yeah, you can't articulate that to somebody that's not in this thing. We know. We know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's a drug. It's like explaining to somebody this is all I think about. Yeah. How do you explain a feeling? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't. It's, 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 inter it's an interesting thing. Yeah, it's a trip. Me being a student, one of y'all offsprings for sure, I'm sure y'all know, you know, anything that I do, it always come from what y'all done, period. I want to get y'all take on how y'all feel about my generation today and where we had as far as music. I like a few. Yeah, I, like I like you. I like some of it. I mean, you? Yeah, I like you. Uh, you you uh, number one on my shit. You know what? <laughs> Your shit is not, and it's not just because our relationship and this shit. Your shit is like top of my playlist all the time because you got that shit. The way you approach it, your attention to detail and how precise you are with how you sound and the way you make your music sound and the tracks that you pick. It's like, that's an art in itself. You know what I mean? So there's actually a few people out there who are. I, um, I listen to and respect. Pusha T. Pusha T, definitely Pusha T. Yeah, that fool hard. Drake. You, you know and I mean? ain't just saying it because you hear I, I like cut, like your song Cut You Off. That's like yeah, my yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. And so I've been listening to you for a minute. Do y'all do y'all feel there's anything that we should um, continue to build on or something that we should bring back to the game a little bit more? Oh, you know, that that's always tricky, man. Artists got to do it how they feel it. How they feel it. Yeah. You know, they shouldn't do it how they think they should do it. They shouldn't do it how they think the people want them to do it. They should do it how they feel it and go from there. And you'll always be happy and satisfied, you know. Um, Hip hop and, and, and the artists got so focused on results. Yeah. You know, well, what my records sell? What What is this? That ain't got nothing to do with you creating the music. Yeah, it has nothing to do. We, you know, when we started this thing, it's not for the money. It's for the music. It's for the love of the music. And if you treat her right, she's going to treat you right. That's the minute you come in this thing and you're in it to make money, yeah, yeah your time is limited in this motherfucker, think, man. Think about when we started. It was no money. We went in there and made what we yeah, want to do. Yeah. After the police, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever we wanted to do. What was the model? They like it? Great. If they don't, fuck them. Well, I respect, <laughs> I respect yeah. MCs when they try to be totally different from everybody else. Like, if you got everybody trying to be the same, that turned me off as an MC. Right. Like, I like, yeah, I like people that's different, creative, and bring something new to the game. Yeah. Just like when we came in, we brought something new to the game. You know what I mean? And that's how it popped off like that. That's ill. That's ill. How do y'all feel um, N.W.A. changed the history of, of music? Oh, okay. Let me get into that. <laughs> <laughs> N.W.A. not only changed music, but we changed pop culture all over the world because we made it all right 
for artists to be themselves. You know, you didn't have to be squeaky clean to be just as big or bigger than the squeaky clean artists. You know, it was artists out there who wasn't being themselves, you know, on record. They was all these nice guys behind the scenes, you know what I mean? They was thugged out. So we was like, yo, we're going to be ourselves no matter what. On record, off record, we're going to be ourselves and let the chips fall where they may. And I think it opened the floodgates for artists who wanted to walk on this side and to, to be a little raw, right. you know, and not be so squeaky clean. I worry about being on the radio. And yeah, all that you know, shit, all you know these I mean? worries that artists used to hold on to them because there was no other avenues, there was no other examples of a person not doing it the square way and being successful. And, and here we come as the example, not only for musicians, but for all artists. You know, it wouldn't be, you know, shows like South Park and, yeah, 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 and all yeah. these shows where, even the reality shows where they bleeping and all that, we started that on the radio, bleeping words out. But the rawness wasn't in the world until NWA said it was okay for you to be yourself. Exactly. And, and there you have it. It's, it's the world before NWA, and it's the world after NWA. Boom. That's crazy. How you feel um, from the music? How did it change how people view urban, uh, our culture, where we from, and, and, and you know the city and our environment? Because these people didn't actually necessarily know what was going on in the community. Why do you feel they, they gravitated toward that and wanted to know and you know, being intrigued by it. I think it was a world that unless you're from, you're not privy to. Unless you're from there, you don't know what's going on there. And here's our, our records was a safe distance where you could visit Compton from a safe distance. Yeah, right. yeah. But you can get up kids. close. Yeah, get all those suburban kids yeah. that, that opportunity to, to, get to experience this shit. Yeah. So now you care. You care about what's going on now because you heard about what's going on. You interested. Now when you hear Compton, it, you don't be like, where, what is that? You be like, oh, it's going down there. Let me pay attention. So, you know, paying attention, then we, we able to shed light on some of the bullshit that's going down too. You know, it's just, to me, that's what made people open up to what we was doing, what we were saying. We, we presented it in a way that they could digest it. They can comprehend it and they could sympathize with yeah. what we was going through. And it's, it's great music. And it's it great like shock art. value, too. And if, if we would have did it any softer than what we did, it wouldn't have gotten the attention that it did. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't have worked. <laughs> yeah, it, wouldn't, it definitely wouldn't have worked. You know? crazy. I mean, you know the, the difference nowadays music is? There wasn't that much competition back then. Right. You know, it was the East and the West. We, there wasn't no West before us, and it just, we came in so different and so real, you know. Back then, you know, we was the underground reporters and all this stuff, but we told what we seen, what goes on in the neighborhood, and now the people like, okay, this is real. Cause first, when you say Compton, they frown up and be like, whoa. But now it's like a everyday thing now. It's there, it's established. So tell me this, mm -hmm. did y'all have any doubt that they wouldn't accept it? I don't think we really cared, man. We, yeah, I, I never, we didn't even think about that because, because you know, we had no idea that it was going to blow up this major, you know, because every time we went in the studio, we was basically just trying to make records that were going to that was going to rock our neighborhood or just rock LA. We wanted to become LA stars. We we wasn't even thinking any further than Los Angeles to tell you the truth. Maybe Oakland, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that was the limit of our thinking when we went in the studio and made these records. We didn't know? think nobody cared what we was going through locally, but we didn't think like the world would give a damn about gang banging and, yeah, yeah, and dope yeah. dealing in, in, in LA. Compton, the South Central, and Long Beach, and Watts, and all that. It's not a hub of hip hop, you know what I mean? We on the fringes. The hub is Brooklyn, is the Bronx, is Harlem. So we over here thinking, we just gonna do stuff that we care about in the hood. Yeah. And this is what went into the record. Just imagine this, we made this record straight out of Compton. Here we are sitting down talking about it fucking 25 years later. Plus, there's a big ass movie coming out and we only spent six weeks on this record. It took us six weeks to record this record. Wow. And that's what I recording on the weekends. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
So that's how much energy we put into it. Like I said, we were just trying to make some records for our neighborhood and to be stars in Los Angeles. Right. And it just Absolutely. went crazy. Yeah, we were only trying to make a few bucks. We wasn't yeah. gold. That's it. That wasn't we had even no a idea thought. what was about to happen. So I, I'm like, damn, they like that. Yeah. <laughs> so when y'all knew it was something bigger than just local in the city, when that hit? So when I started hearing that, they want us to do shows in Chicago. They want us to do shows in yeah, yeah. Tennessee. And yeah. it's like, damn, we we ain't locals no more. Right. Oh, also, <laughs> when I saw Axl Rose in one of his videos yeah. with an NWA hat on, yeah. like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a trip for me to see that, like you were saying, Q, it inspired, no matter even what genre, a pop artist actually can be raw in today's music, that's the trip. They can say some of the things they probably couldn't say back then on record. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Or yeah. was scared to say. They could always say it, say but they it. was scared or, they, or their company, you know, wouldn't let them do it. Right. You know what I mean? We didn't have no a and right. We didn't have nobody. We, we were we an A&R. Our a &R is these two <laughs> motherfuckers right here. You know what I mean? So it's like, it get past these two and yeah, easy. Yeah, well, see, yeah, so it's like, he no, wanted it no, harder, no, harder, You can say harder. some crazier shit than that. that that's, that's how the a &R went. <laughs> so it's just a trip to see how big it's grown. You know, we was... We had our own style. We thought it was just gonna be ours and everybody else was gonna do them. But it's like, we turned hip hop on its ear a little bit. We, we, we changed the trajectory of hip hop. Yeah, a lot. We was like, how many times can we say nigga? <laughs> how many times did we say it last time? We gonna say it more this time. We need more fucks on this record, more man. Fucks, nigga. <laughs> wow. Easy. Yeah. What, what, what was that relationship like, man? It's cool, man. I mean, we've been knowing him for like, knew him for a while. Like, I knew him before we started even doing music. You know what I mean? He's just a cool, Dre did too. You know, they used to be in a, a DJ crew, High Power Productions together back in the day, but just a cool brother, man. Yeah. Just super cool. Smart. Yeah. I mean, he was ahead of his time. He was, yeah, he was. you yeah, know, he was smart, taking smart, what he did on the street. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he took I mean, he took all of that yeah. street knowledge and hustling on the streets and brought it over to this thing that we was doing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, super smart, creative. I can say one thing he did. Me and you was mad. We was trying to get on island. Remember? We mad. Oh man, we want to get on. Island. He was holding off for priority. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. said, "Cause I want the label." Red and I wanted, you know, he wanted the label. Yeah. Nobody else would do that. Yeah, wait, Island, wait, wait, wait. Island wait, Records wait, wait. wanted the labels. Records on the record. Yeah, was, Island Records wanted to wanted to make it. Island Records yeah. with NWA and he and we was like, what the fuck? Let's go get this. Yeah, money, he man. held and, off. And you know what else is crazy about him? That I used to we used to be in interviews and I'd be looking at him like he crazy sometimes. He'd do interviews and he'd be like. Yeah, NWA is an all-star group. That, <laughs> before we even blew up, I was looking like, all-star group? <laughs> like, we ain't did nothing, but it's like he, he knew before we knew, you know what I mean? Like, what was going to pop. Straight visionary. Yeah, yeah. it's like he had faith. Straight visionary yeah. about, he was trying to do, like, I don't want no, I want the shit hard. I want it hard, 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 hard. Yeah. It's a trip he put out J.J. Fad first, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 the Ruthless was going to be the hardcore label <laughs> until J.J. AJ Fab blew up and he's like, you know what? Money. He probably could do more than just hard shit. He, like, he probably could do other shit, you know? So, but he was just, I just remembered him like, I want these kind of records on Ruthless. You know, he was specific. He wanted it rough, hardcore shit. He's like, man, them other raps y'all got yeah. without the hardcore shit, you know, say that for the side, but we want the rough shit. Mm -hmm. Because we wanted to make records. So it was like, Easy was down to pay for us to go in the studio and make records. We was gonna make the shit hard like like he wanted it. That's crazy. What was that energy like in the studio? The energy was crazy. It was just about free. fun. Yeah. It was just free, fun. Imagine it's just us in the studio. Yeah. We're paying for the shit ourselves, because easy well, easy's paying for it. And we're just sitting there just creating. I mean, easy. We used to bump heads creatively. Every character, every character we knew coming by. That's what was fun, cause it, everybody was dropping by while we was doing the records. Whether they stay 10 minutes or 20 minutes, two hours, 
We, you know, we was doing the record in one room, but in the little lobby, it was just always cracking. Right. Somebody was always a, up in there just hanging out. That's ill. You said y'all y'all bumped heads creatively all the time? Yeah, me and Easy used to get in arguments all the time about what was going to go on the record, what wasn't going on the record, like, all the time, you know? But we, come, we always come to a, a cool compromise, and it was always this mutual respect because we knew we were both trying to get something that was great. You know what I'm saying? So we arguing, but we know we're both trying to get something great. It's just about, okay, what the fuck is that going to be? You know? So uh, we argue, stop, finish the record. Go party. That's crazy. Boiling down, man. When it's all said and done, history, 100 years from now, what would y'all want NWA legacy to say? World's most dangerous group. A group that made it all right for artists to be themselves. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I just think I would like for us to leave a legacy of inspiration, you know? Because, you know, we, we came from nothing, you know? Dirt, nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, just that inspiration and that you can just like do something that's really different. You can go against the grain. You can do something that's outside of the box and still win. Still win. And leave a mark that's so big, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like leave that mark, that imprint that's And you know, so you never pour. You yeah. never pour yeah. when you're doing something creative. Right. When you're putting something together creative, you ain't thinking about Nothing but that, you know, it's, it's, it's a focus and it's an it's a energy in doing something positive that helped us be where we are today. You know, I always said we was constructive and not destructive, even though we was living in a destructive neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? We was like, yo, let's take this energy and let's do something fun, positive and dope and not just use our time to fuck up the neighborhood even more. So. I just think that energy has inspired us and everybody who's who can hear our story, see our story, and understand our story. Yeah, yeah I was telling Cube this earlier. The group had to break up, not fade away. It had to break up. Everybody went and did their thing. And 26 later, 26 years later, a movie about us, <laughs> pole kids from the streets. <laughs> I mean, it had to break up to get here. It just, like a snowball was built in 26 years, and bam, I think we're going to be bigger now yeah. than back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just looking at y'all, man, it seemed like y'all still got the same chemistry, even though I wasn't even around looking then, just hearing the stories. It feel like the same vibe today. It's like yeah. crazy, Ain't no man. beef, ain't no we nothing. Gotta, we, we got a bond that yeah. you can't it manufacture it. it, you can't <laughs> buy it, you, you got to go through it. Yeah. And... You know, we all look at each other and know what we went through mm -hmm. to get where we are. And it's like, we did that shit. And we had the courage to do it. You know, there's a lot of obstacles. You know, we, we went from being just locals in LA yeah. to talking and, and, and grappling with C. Dolores Tucker and people like uh, Tipper Gore and, mm -hmm. you know, the PMRC and, and, and the FBI. And, you know, we tangling with some of the biggest power entities out there, you know, it was like all kind of forces against us and and it didn't crack us, break us, didn't turn us into punks. Uh, made us stronger. Didn't make yeah. us bite our tongue. It just made us stand up even more. And that's powerful. And I hope the movie, man, make other people that's young out there try to do what we did. You know what I mean? Like, say, I'm gonna go in the studio, we gonna go in here and make something new, fresh. We don't give a damn what nobody say, and maybe one day our shit'll be like this. Yeah, and it might not even just, it's, it, it, this inspiration is not just dedicated to music, it's whatever the fuck you're art. doing. Yeah. You know, any type of anything. art or entertainment, or anything, yeah. anything that you're pushing towards, and you know, people are telling you, you shouldn't do this because of this, you know? Just stay strong about what you're trying to do if you really believe in it, and if it's good, Keep it cracking, keep pushing, keep pushing because something can come out of it. I mean, look at us. Yeah. Yeah. That's it right there. That's it. That's it. You got it? Cool. 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 cool.